Hi, I'm Chris from Windows, and hey, you can do this. Because this is Air Windows Tape Bias. This is the final piece, not counting last minute fooling around with it, that will go into 2 Tape 7, which you'll get before the end of this month. And here's the deal. It is just a little bias control. When set to exactly 0 0.5, which I can do in Reaper by double-clicking the VST. It doesn't do anything. That is literally just the dry signal. But what it does when you start using it is go to two distinct sounds. And one of them acts more like over-biasing with the exception of I don't actually have a bias tone poking through, but it's doing the same rough behavior, especially when used in to tape. And then the other direction is under biasing. Now, why would you be fooling around with stuff like that? Well, for a variety of reasons. One, over biasing steps on high frequency transients in a characteristic way. This is not unlike the way that my existing plugin Golden Slew does it, because that was the closest model that I found for optimizing it a little bit and getting it to work. So we can suppress the sound very thoroughly and squish it right down to nothing. So extreme over-biasing will make the sound real messy and weird. But the interesting thing is that you almost immediately get into this zone where you can't really hear what it's doing anymore. But it still does a real good job at the behavior that you want to get out of uh, doing that little tape over bias that people sometimes do for a warmer sound. The opposite, people will sometimes do on purpose, although probably not. Uh, I did some testing on two different versions of real tape decks because I rented time on them using an internet service. So I got to play with a Studer, which was somewhat overbiased, and a Telefunken that was notably underbiased. And the sound that that produces. can be a little crunchy, a little bright. It's a weird way of making things bright. Here, let me switch over to a drum track. And we'll just set that to sort of loop a little bit, because that's a more effective way of demonstrating what this does. So if I go with the over-biasing here, We start darkening things up quite a bit, or even more, a ridiculous amount. You don't really want to go this far. It's just there in case you wanted to do it. But the middle range of it is pretty non-intrusive. Thing is, when we start going to the underbias, that's a completely different algorithm. And it is actually an algorithm modeled after the behavior of the recording of the real tape machine that was faintly underbiased. And it doesn't quite do the exact thing, but I don't think anybody has ever done this particular algorithm of doing roughly this kind of thing before. You can plainly hear how this has brightened things up, but it's losing detail it's losing information up there in the highs, even though the highs are being somewhat exaggerated. And we can go even farther. Until we barely have a functional recording at all. 
and then start bringing it back. And back even more. And then 0 0.5 is no effect again. So this, you can do the kind of thing that people do with under biasing. It's a slightly more glossy, crunchy type of sound. And then you can go even beyond there to where it's really interfering with the tone quite a bit. But the middle range, right around 0 0.5, that's going to be extremely subtle variations on this type of effect. And pretty much there you have it. Tape bias isn't a lot, but it does include some things you have not heard before, because I did not have the under bias in any previous version of to tape or in any other uh, plugin I've ever made. So I don't know whether that's going to come in useful for any of you. It's a bit of an unpleasant, crunchy little sound because underbiasing often doesn't sound great. That's why people usually err on the side of slightly overbiasing. But within the context of the subtlety of the effect, it does give you that very subtle way of trimming between slightly darkened from overbiasing and slightly hyped and dry from underbiasing. So the hope is that that's going to come in some kind of useful. And the important thing is that this is going into the plugin 2 tape 7, which comes out next. I am looking forward to bringing it to you. Once I'm finished doing that, I am going to take a couple of weeks and just take a breather. It's been a real journey essentially updating every single thing about the existing to tape six, which people quite like. I just knew I could do better. And that's kind of what I do. So we're going to finish that up, put out to tape seven, and I'll see you a couple of weeks after that. And at that point, I think it'll be time to start working on Air Windows consoles, uh, console X in a serious way, because I'm looking to get a nice little control surface for it. As soon as I get more information about that, I'll show it. But at the same time, I have the audio code working, but there's one where I need to use the same technology I'm using to produce Air Windows meter and do a plugin that just has like all of the knobs and interface elements I don't normally do. And the point there is to try to produce a, you know, knobbly GUI Air Windows plugin that fully takes advantage of everything I can bring to bear so that I can have all the controls I need laid out in a useful way. And then also have some other things that people don't normally let you do. Like, uh, resize the plugin with wild abandon in all kinds of directions and just make it be something that you can contort into whatever shape you want and it will do its level best to make a appropriate uh, layout of the and sizing of all the controls and I think you should be able to manipulate the layout of things more than usual I think you should be able to color code it or have the plugin adapt itself to the color of the track that you're on so that if you needed to switch over to like the guitar tracks instance of console X and you had it color coded to green, then the interface should be in green. Or maybe you don't want to do that. So what you want to do is change the font of it and then go and skin the entire thing 
in a nice like uh, wood grain texture stuff like that so there's a bunch of work to be done I wouldn't be mentioning it if I wasn't well on the way to making these things happen and it'll be kind of exciting to finally get rolling on that but I'm going to put out to tape first and then take a bit of a breather and I'll catch back up with people when I feel like charging into the full-on to uh, console X journey and that'll be quite exciting anyways I hope you like uh, tape bias which will be existing in the uh, guts of which changes everything of course because when tape bias exists in to tape 7 that means it's running inside the virtual tape section where it's subject to the effects of Air Windows doubly. All of that kind of stuff. So that should be pretty interesting. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.